welcome back. As you can see, we've set up a feast for your eyes and a super fun story. We have Dr. Stephen Viel with us, and we're going to talk about how do you go from being a pediatrician to writing and publishing children's books and stories. Steve, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Lauren. I appreciate your having me on your show. Thanks for being here. We're thrilled to have you. Not only did you make the place look great, but you've got a super story to tell. So I am interested, and I know everyone else will want to know, how do you go from being a pediatrician to suddenly being a published children's story author? Um, well, a lot of it was just fortuitous. I. Uh, have always liked rhyming and writing poetry, and I wrote a lot of uh, poems and, and sang songs to my daughters when they were growing up, and it just kind of carried over to my pediatric practice that uh, kids are a constant source of inspiration, and I got really interested in that transition between magical thinking and they're starting to grasp the real world and, and question things like how does Santa Claus do it and how does Easter Bunny and the, uh, the uh, Tooth Fairy. And that inspired this first book, uh, My Dog is a Tooth Fairy, and a child trying to understand how that happened. But actually becoming an author, I mean, I certainly thought numerous times about the, when I was writing these poems during my years of practice that it would be fun to have it illustrated, but I never really took that to action until uh, shortly after I retired, I was uh, doing some, uh, uh, taking some classes and you know, exercise classes, and my trainer just happened to be uh, the mother of two of my former patients, uh, a woman named Ashley McEwen. And, uh, she, we somehow got to talking about the poems, and she said, gee, I'd, I'd like to see them, and maybe I can illustrate them. And I, I said, well, okay. She, <laughs> so she looked at them, and uh, she said, I, I want to illustrate one of these. And she did a few samples, and I just thought, wow, she really captured it and, and embellished it, really. And, uh, I mean, I really have to give her so much credit for the, you know, what she did with the stories. But she illustrated the first book, and kind of the rest is history. You know, I uh, became, uh, I guess you could say, an author, and uh, we formed a partnership uh, in Lollipop Books, which mm -hmm. is the publishing company we have. And uh, it's it's been really a lot of fun doing these books, especially seeing the magic that happens when your story is turned into an illustrated book. That's just really an exciting thing Bringing to see. Bringing it to life is yeah. a whole different level, isn't it? Yeah. So the first book, My Dog... Is the Tooth Fairy. Is the Tooth Fairy. And then the current one, the most recent, that's coming out right now, is A Gift You Don't Want. That's so correct. let's talk about the newest one. Yeah. Well, A Gift You Don't Want um, <clears throat> is a story about a boy who um, gets the flu, and he's told by his mother that he got it from his best friend, Bobby. And he's a young kid. He doesn't understand why his friend would give him something that is so unpleasant. <laughs> and, you know, he questions it. But then shortly thereafter, his mother says, uh, well, your sister's got the flu now, and she got it from you. And he's like, I, I can't imagine how I could give it to my sister. I don't share anything with my sister. <laughs> And uh, he starts to realize that uh, some things you give without knowing and you pass them along where nothing is showing is essentially the, That's the wonderful. praise from the book. But, uh, and, you know, that, that was the original poem, but I decided in turning it into a book to, to embellish it by adding some more of my pediatric background by adding a section called flu facts. And the flu facts are just trying to explain to young kids in a way that they might uh, appreciate it or enjoy it what the flu virus is, how we get it, how we pass it, what we can do to try and not get it. And uh, that, that section, which also has a review questions and a key so parents and teachers can reinforce it if they want to use it mm -hmm. in that way, 
uh, hopefully they can learn something from the book more than just the f hopefully a fun poem. And so are you actually distributing it to schools? Are you looking to move it into schools? Um, we will, for sure. Uh, we have made various efforts to be, you know, there's a whole school circuit that mm -hmm. people, you know, go to, and that's, that's a very competitive thing as well. Uh, we, we do have a few school visits lined up, and we, we hope to get more. I've actually looked into getting it to school libraries or into the public library, but it's a more involved process that I was pretty surprised at what the hoops that they yeah, want you to there's a jump lot of through to, to get there. Right? But various people tell me, oh, I can, I can get your book into the Scholastic Book Fair and things like that. Now, whether they really can, I, I hope I will certainly pursue that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking to sell it in any way that we can, um, our, our major way of selling it that we've chosen at this point is through uh, Amazon. Okay. Amazon is, is a very competitive uh, way to sell things. Uh, there's so many books you know, being published every day, especially children's books, that to try and get your book noticed is, is a challenge, mm -hmm. to say the least. And they have different ways that you can do that. One of them is called Amazon Advertising, and you can literally sort of place bids on your book that, that match uh, keywords that people might put in to uh, you'll search for something. And if you get a hit and they look at your book and click on it, well, you pay your, your bid, but then you hope that they will go on to buy it. And that's just one way of trying to get your book noticed when there's so many other books out there. It's, it's not like when we were kids where you go into a bookstore and you just look and yeah. feel and touch and there's a lot yeah. more options. It's too bad because I used to love doing that. Uh, you Obviously there's still Barnes and Noble but and we did get the first book into Barnes and Noble but only as a print-on-demand book because Barnes and Noble will not buy from you as an individual. They buy from distributors right. and that book was printed by Ingram, which is the biggest book distributed in the world, but the problem with print-on-demand books is that you don't make any money. <laughs> you know? Well, and in, in truth, you're not going to become a millionaire from a book. Yeah. However, the whole point, I think, of, of what you're seeing here, number one, is retirement doesn't mean you lay down and die. Absolutely. Now you're probably busier than you actually no, were it, it before. No, it is sort of, especially now as it's being, you know, getting on the market, it is a full-time job. Yeah. It really is for me. Ashley's just got a crazy busy life, so she just can help some. But uh, it's, it's fun, and I have to admit, it really gave me a purpose in my retirement. I feel like I'm not just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Right. I'm constantly busy. And, uh, and you're learning a lot. I'm learning things. a lot, and I agree. I don't, I don't have to make money off of this. I would really like to make some money for her because she's been so generous in, in giving me her mm -hmm. services, you know, essentially as a business partner, but I haven't really been able to pay her a huge amount so far. And I'm, and that's really the biggest reason I want to make some money is so that she gets uh, compensated for all the effort she's put into well, having Well, there are different made. ways to do it. And obviously she's very talented and there may be other opportunities that come. And I've learned that through my own publishing and just generally in businesses, you really don't know where the opportunity is going to come from. Now she's out there as a published illustrator. Yeah. And and frankly, I love what you've done with the different formats. I'd never seen the giant format like this. Yeah. What a fun way to go to a school or a library and do a reading session with these well, kids. That's what we thought. It's 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 a little bit more versatile than, uh, you know, a lot of people try and do projections, which is great, because mm -hmm. if you've got a big audience, that's the way to do it. But uh, it's not always amenable to, to doing projections. We've done things like the uh, Southern California Moms uh, Great Big Family Play Day up in LA, and, and you know you don't you don't have time to set up that kind of stuff. You're just sure. you know so if you just have a little book to show them, you're, most people aren't going to see it. Whereas with this, they can. Uh, kind of see what you're, you're de describing. And book fairs, and you've also gone, which I love, into plush, and this is your, your flu germ, is that, that right? That is our flu germ. That is what Ashley's <laughs> idea of how to, to personify uh, the flu virus was she made it into a balloon, and certainly 
Bobby could have touched the balloon when he was getting sick and not know that he uh, contaminated it and given it to his friend, and that's how he got it. So that was a clever idea of how to you know, show the transmission of the germ. Uh, and I thought the drawing, essentially it's supposed to be a balloon, but it, mm -hmm. it was so cute that I, we decided to make it into a, a plush. It's got uh, you know, the little, uh, I don't know, stem of the balloon uh -huh. and uh, the whole thing. And so. the squishiness of and it. And the squishy, I love it's that. a squishy. So you know, we hope that, uh, I mean obviously, <laughs> it may be an interesting sell to tell people, can you buy our little germ, but. Uh, <laughs> or you package them together. Well, and that's something we're looking in into. You know, we're looking into that. That, you know, to be honest, when, when she wanted to uh, draw that germ, I said, well, you know, the real flu virus has little spikes, all these little proteins on it. Don't you want to put that? And I'm sort of glad she uh, ignored me and, yeah. and because it would have been kind of a less pleasant little, uh, you know, doll if she had done that. Yeah, no, it's adorable. And I love the whole direction that you've taken. And honestly, as I talk to you more, I think about our viewers who, many of whom may be retired or maybe not, but they may have an idea for a book or they may yeah. have, you know, a seed of an idea that they haven't pursued because they didn't actually think about the whole trail of the process, but you've really you know, gone through it. it, it is. It's, Anybody can really do it, uh, you know, and self-publishing is becoming more and more popular. We looked into trying a traditional publisher, but it's a long process. Uh, you don't know for months whether you're going to be accepted, and they tend to only want you as an illustrator or the, you know, the, or you as an author or the illustrator to come separately. They want to match the illustrator right. in the book. and. Uh, that was a problem, but uh, we just decided we would we would do it this way, and it's certainly a more and more popular way that people do it. It's it's harder because you don't get your book vetted in the same way that you right. do. So you might go in half cock thinking you've got the next great book and find out uh, the, it's not true. But but you just have the opportunity to put yourself yeah, out there, don't you? You do, and and you can do it for pretty inexpensive. I mean, if you can find somebody to illustrate your book, or you can illustrate it. You know, basically, you could do print on demand, and you know, based you don't have to pay really anything up front. Mm -hmm. They they print your book, you send a manuscript through to them, and they uh, send you proofs of it, and they can make uh, some can make hard covers, they can make paperback, they can make uh, you know Kindles or you know and that kind of book, and yeah, and uh, we're going to do all of those things through Amazon. We hope that we can get it into other Amazon markets. Right now it's uh, Amazon US, but uh, there's Amazon uh, in Great Britain and Canada mm -hmm. and Australia, and those are all English speaking markets. Uh, in fact, one of my top reviews that is gonna be with the book is from a teacher in Australia who's, I just matched up with her on one of the Facebook you know, sites and she just has been so sweet and is a young teacher who is so enthusiastic and it's just wonderful to have her uh, liking my book, you know. That's so, uh, great. Yeah. So how can people find the book? I know lollipopbooks.com is your yeah, publishing. Yeah, that's, that's our uh, website, uh, and they can certainly buy it there. We're, we are kind of pushing, I mean, at this point, we haven't figured out how to sell the plushies because, other than on our website, because it's, it's tough. You, you lose such a large part of the, you know, the retail price mm -hmm. of it. Uh, when when you have a retailer sell it, uh, that we haven't figured it out because I don't want to sell that thing for fifteen dollars or something. I want it to be you know an inexpensive uh, side thing. But uh, in any case, we are selling uh, on Amazon. Uh, we are selling on our website, and we're hoping that we can uh, get it into other markets. We, we certainly the last book we had it in a lot of. Uh, local bookstore, little bookstores and, and uh, boutiques and toy stores. And, and as I said, uh, you know, it did get into Barnes and Noble. I don't think we'll try that with this one because it just isn't really, uh, you know, big enough. Uh, 
Well, we'll put the website, lollipopbooks.com, on, our, on yeah. our screen so our viewers can find you. And also the titles of the book, A Gift You Don't Want, yeah. and also My Dog is the Tooth Fairy, That's I think good. are very catchy, and people yeah. will know to look for them. Well, we also have you know social media. We uh, have a Facebook site and uh, Instagram, and you can find those by just Googling at love lollipop. Uh, books and uh, it's L O L L Y instead of L O L L I. Right. But uh, if you want to see our Instagram, we have a, a very interesting video actually right now that uh, talks about the book, and uh, I hope right. people will maybe take a look at that. I'm sure our viewers will look for you. Thank you so much for Thank coming in so and much. sharing your beautiful books with us. And we'll look forward to hearing an update soon. I will look forward to giving you one. And we'll be right back.